Way, way back in the day, I used to work in the um, radio field as an on-air personality. And one of my favorite songs of all time is Drift Away by Dobie Gray. I think it's just an amazing song. I love it. I've loved it since I was a kid. I love the, the message, love the harmony, love everything about it. And then when I was working in radio uh, back in this, this song came out in 1973, even before I was born. But uh, then in 2002, uh, there was a remake by a guy named Uncle Cracker. <laughs> Uncle Cracker. I can hardly even say his name without laughing because I just did not care for Uncle Cracker. He was one of my least favorite musicians, but he made this uh, remake and covered the song and it became immensely popular. And we used to play it on the, the air. And I said to the general manager one day, I hate this song. I hate that he's taken this great song and, and that, that people are only going to know it because, you know, he redid it. And he said that one, the general manager said to me, yeah, but people are going to know it because he redid it. Because he put it out there again. That song was not in front of people. And nobody was ever going to know that great song by Dobie Gray until this Uncle Cracker remake came out and people heard it again and fell in love with the song again. So, you know, it, it had to be put back in front of people. Uh, and so all of this is to get around to the idea that that much the same is true in public relations. Doesn't matter how good a campaign you're running, doesn't matter how good your message is or how much you believe in it, if nobody hears about it. So we've got to use in public relations the news media to get information out. We've got to have a good relationship with the news media and understand the function and, and how it works and how we can best use it in our public relations efforts. So let's take a quick look at the news media and how it relates to our functions as public relations practitioners. So a couple of first questions we need to ask ourselves. Uh, first of all, isn't media relations the same thing as public relations? Sometimes people say, you know, what's well, the say, you know, you get publicity people and that's public relations and it's all media relations. Well, no, that's that's not true. They're not exactly the same. Media relations is a part of public relations, uh, but it's not the whole deal. There are other things involved in public relations, right? So media relations is an important function of public relations. It's not the whole deal, but it is a, an important segment there. So it's a piece of what you do in public relations. The second big question we need to ask, and, and as a first question that, that we need to understand, is basically what is the purpose of the media? What is the function? What is the purpose of the media? And people will give you lots of answers. They'll say, well, the, the media is there to entertain or to persuade us or to inspire us, to educate us, to inform us, all of these things. And in fact, that's not the purpose of the media. The purpose of the media is very simply to make money. We've got to remember that. We've got to keep that front and center. They have a job to do. They have a role to play. They have, you know, stakeholders that they've got to um, provide a profit for. So um, we do need to keep in mind that as much as the media may perform those functions of informing us and entertaining us and those types of things, their main purpose is to make money. It is a business just like any other. So they're there to make money. So we need to think about what is the state of the news media as well. As public relations people, we need to understand what is the state of the news medium. First of all, we need to understand that there, it's in constant evolution. The news media is changing. It's it, just like any business. It doesn't stay the same. Um, the way it performs its function, what function it provides, you know, how segmented it is now. These are all parts of, of evolution. We've gone from, you know, having a couple major networks with a one hour news program that's fairly straightforward, fairly neutral in stance to having all kinds of specific news media channels um, that really have a particular function in in uh, you know serving a certain audience, whether that's an ultra conservative audience or ultra liberal audience or somewhere in the middle. But it's very segmented now, and this is a constant evolution. We've gone from print media now to electronic media to social media and the and the role that it plays. But uh, so the the news media is in constant state of evolution. We've got to keep up with that. We've got to understand what these functions are. We also need to understand that the media is pervasive, not just the news media, but all media is pervasive. It is, is with us all the time. We always have access to it, especially in, in our, in our current, um, you know, state of technology, we have access to all these things. We are being constantly bombarded by the media. It is pervasive. It is a part of every aspect of our lives pretty much at all times. The uh, media also serves an important function. We need to keep that in mind. They, they are an important piece of this puzzle. They have a role to play. They serve an important strategic function for us in public relations. They get our message out. They help us reach a particular audience. They help us um, identify and, and, and craft a message for a particular audience. So they, they perform for us in public relations. The, the media and access to the news media serves an important strategic 
function. It's important to remember that in the news media, relationships are key. Um, the news media is made up of people. And so what kind of access you have, and what kind of you know, function you're going to get from that news media is a, is a product of the relationships that you have with the people controlling that. We talk about gatekeepers, people who decide what goes on the air, what doesn't, what makes it in the news, what doesn't, uh, what's an audience going to hear about and what they, what, what are they not going to hear about? That's determined by people. And so we need to have relationships with the people who are creating that. We need to have functional, professional relationships with the, with the people who are responsible for determining what the what's going to be covered in the news media. We also need to understand that there are ethical standards at work in the news media. That the that as journalists and as public relations practitioners, we should all be abiding by this this idea of first of all what is right and what is wrong, and uh, so we want to stay away from things like. Um, like, uh, you know, pay for play. We don't want to, you know, be, if, you know, that's advertising when you pay for, for placement or whatever, we don't want to, we don't want to try and bribe people in the news media. We want to build those relationships, but we're not going to cross those ethical boundaries. And, and we don't want to ask them to do that either to cross those ethical boundaries. So, so we need to understand that there are specific ethical standards in the news media. And, and if we're dealing with somebody who doesn't, subscribe to those ethical standards, then we ought to question whether or not they're a good partner for us, quite honestly. So we want to seek out those people who have those ethical standards. So we need to understand what the news media is about, what their function is, and, and how that fits into what our goals are as, as practitioners of public relations. So best practices for the news media, a couple of things here. First, we want to monitor the news media. We want to know what's going on. We want to develop those relationships. We want to pitch to the news media and we want to help shape that agenda and understand that they shape the agenda. So when we're monitoring these things, we want to just keep an eye on what's happening in the news, what's going on in the world. How does that affect what we're doing? How does that affect the messaging that we bring through the news media? We have to have to develop those relationships. Again, we use the news media to develop relationships with our with our publics in public relations, but also we need to develop relationships with the correct people and the correct media outlets so that we have access to those things and can get our message out effectively. We also want to pitch to people. We need to learn the, the art of the pitch and, and not only the pitch, but what is going to make that pitch more um, it, you know, practical for the person we're pitching. So when we're thinking about, you know, we're pitching to somebody in a, in, in a news type thing, is this a long form or short form thing, you know, type of media outlet? Is this somebody who's going to have to try and get this message across in 140 characters or do they have an hour? Is this an hour long podcast? We need to pitch our specific agenda and let them know, first of all, what we're about and what we can bring to the table, what we can offer, because again, they've got a job to do. And the easier we can make that on them and the more appealing we can make it in terms of uh, how it will affect their audience and their appeal to their audience, uh, then the more effective that pitch is going to be. So we need to be prepared to, to pitch and we need to have our, our ducks in a row and be able to pitch effectively to media outlets. And we need to understand that the news media um, shapes the agenda. So we want to shape that agenda as well. We want to use our message to shape the agenda toward, you know, positive or negative, whatever it is we're trying to achieve with that campaign or just informative aspects. So we want to um, you know, consider what we want the end goal to be and then try and shape the agenda toward that. So how do we go about measuring impact for uh, things in the news media? How do we understand what our return on investment is in terms of public relations? Are we getting anything out of this? Uh, there are a variety of different ways that we can measure impact and that are used to measure impact. Some people do what you call advertising value equivalents. So they would say, okay, if we get X amount of inches in print, then that's equivalent to if we were to buy that same amount of square inch, you know, material in the paper, then that's what we're getting out of it. Right. Or if we, you know, are on the air on a news show for two minutes, well, what would that cost us if we were to buy that advertising time for two minutes instead of getting it for free through that, then that's the advertising value equivalent. So basically it's saying, okay, what's the going rate for that media? And what are we getting? Uh, although we're not paying for it, what are we getting? And what would that equate to? And, and so some people, you know, just do a straight up, it's the equivalent of whatever it would cost us to, 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 to purchase that, uh, that time or that, that, uh, that, that square inch or square footage in that media. That's the advertising value equivalent. So 
that's one way that we can go about measuring impact. But some question exists as to whether that's an accurate reflection, because not all not all media time is the same. And so our media impact is the same. So is it really the same as if we were to purchase that advertising? And so it's not a very accurate necessarily account for that. There's also been developed what we call the Barcelona principles, and it's called that just because it was developed at a conference in Barcelona uh, years ago. And so they, they identified these seven elements, and you can check these out. There. They're just called the Barcelona principles that say these are the ways that we measure impact. Um, and it's a, it's a more structured way to identify, you know, what's the you know, equivalent impact of, of, of this public relations effort and what are we really getting out of it. So that's another kind of more structured way and probably more accurate reflection than straight up advertising value equivalents. So you can check out these Barcelona principles and look at these seven things and 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 see how they identify how we would measure the impact of of public relations efforts. Sometimes people will just go by impressions too, um, in terms of, you know, how many people is this reaching impressions basically just say how many people are going to see this. And, and so, you know, every time if I, if I'm promoting an organization and it's in a newspaper, how many people are going to see that newspaper? That's an impression. So we measure by impressions, how much access and how, how much, how many people are those people are going to tell and how many, uh, how, how much is this going to get out? Is this going to have a ripple effect? And so that's what we would use for impressions. Again, not very scientific, but, uh, but it is one way that, you know, some people will say, well, look, we got 17 mentions in this paper and those are probably going to be shared, uh, you know, through 5,000 subscriptions. And those people are probably going to tell people. So we've got, you know, the X amount of uh, impressions that we made through this one article or through this one, um, a news outlet. So uh, the, the real, in the end though, the, the answer is how do we measure the impact? Eh, we really don't know exactly. There's no exact scientific way to, to measure precisely what impact you're having through this public relations effort. I mean, you could, you could do something and a, and a tweet goes viral. And then how do you measure that? How do you measure the impact of that? And, and then what's the monetary equivalent of that? So we do the best we can. And Barcelona Principles probably provides us the most structured and, and orderly way to do that. But, uh, but really, then it just depends on what your goals are, too. If you're just looking to get your, the name of your organization out, then impressions may be more valuable to you than any kind of monetary return on investment. So the answer is when we're measuring impact, it really just depends on the situation, depends on the goals, depends on what you're working toward there. So. What we do know, though, is that the news media is important to our function. It's um, the media relations are a critical function of public relations, uh, especially in today's world where we're constantly, um, you know, in touch with the media and our and our publics are constantly in touch with the media. We have to do an effective job of monitoring and, to the best of our ability, managing the impressions and the and the impact that we're having in that news media. So, uh, it. Uh, requires some of our focus and some of our effort as public relations practitioners. If you have questions about the function of news media and the intersection of that with public relations, please feel free to, to send me an email message. I'd love to hear from you there. Uh, in the meantime, I hope that you will consider the function of news media and the important role that media relations plays as we look at it in the overall scope of public relations. <music>